So I uh, made a mistake in the previous video saying that there wasn't a emergency stop. Well there is. It is this thing here. So this this is a cover for the start uh, which I think is a great idea. Uh, stop accidental uh, uh, pressing the button. But it does have this, if you can see that, it's like a protrusion that strikes the stop button. So when you hit it, the idea is, is it locks the stop button down, which is, which is fine. Uh, unfortunately, because it's plastic, if this hinge goes, right, or if the stop grid switch gets damaged by this, this which is actually quite sharp edged, you, you're going to uh, really lose that function. And I think the other thing as well is that typically start stop buttons are not designed to break fault current. Uh, and that's not to say you're going to get a fault current, but they're not. So I fitted this thing. So this is a proper emergency stop. Press it down, locks in place. You need a key to release it. And that gives you the advantage as well as that if, you've, if you live in a house where you've got kids or that, or, or interested, uh, other interested adults who may not. Uh, understand the safety aspects of operating a lathe it means that you can lock it and take your key take your key away uh, and then there's nothing they can do to start it okay so that's an advantage so the other thing I've done is I've fitted this micro switch here which is on the uh, the chuck cover right? and as I said in the previous video the reason for that was to stop the chuck key being left in when you press the start button because that throws it out and as I say there's been a number of instances in, in industry and I've personally seen it uh, of people doing that unfortunately and, and fortunately not with serious injury but there's a potential so now you cannot start the lathe with the cover up okay you, it must be at least in that position so you're not going to have the chuck key then when you, if you're actively doing that you're obviously not going to have the chuck key in Right, uh, I've used bullet connectors to interrupt the stop circuit. The good, that was the other good thing about this. I had a horrible feeling that the uh, the original stop was an e-stop, so it created a halt signal to the program. It isn't. It's a, it's a proper stop. Stop. It does interrupt the power, uh, which is great. Uh, so I've interrupted that and put bullet connectors. The reason why I'm doing bullet connectors is because it's a really easy and quick way to modify the circuit okay easier than using push connectors and things like that which I can do but as I say I've done it this way because it's much easier especially for a serial circuit now the the reason why I've done that as well is I mentioned that I'm a bit nervous that the when you're in screw cutting mode right so when it's being this this uh, cross slide's being driven the saddle starting to remember the names now when the saddle's being driven you could drive it into the chuck okay if you wandered away or something stupid I don't know but on a big lathe it does happen now that's prevented because you have a uh, on the drive a, a a a weak link a pin that's designed to break if they do make contact right uh, I can't see that here so what I'd like to do is to fit a micro switch I did I I bought one similar to this one which could work but the trouble is is that you have quite a big latency with these so to do an accurate position is really difficult so you really need a proximity switch uh, and I'll have a think about that in the meantime I'm going to connect it up with just this limiting because I'll be honest with you it's probably going to be a while figuring out this uh, before I start to do screw cutting and things like that so that's the, the lathe back in position. Uh, so the emergency stop and the micro switch will give those a test. So there's a switch here where you can go uh, reverse the direction of the motor. So we'll go forward. Uh, this is this is loose. Okay, so we're not pressing on the stop. Right. This is on. That's on. So if I if I press the start button. And things start to rotate. We can test the emergency stop. That works okay. Release that. And we can test this. Okay, so if I open this and try pressing the start button, 
it shouldn't start and it doesn't. If I close this and press the start button, it starts. Okay, so that's fine. If I lift this up, it will stop it, okay. So obviously you, you wouldn't be doing that though. So that's it finished. As I say, I'm gonna see if I can't fit something which stops the uh, the saddle from tran uh, uh, moving too close to the chuck. Full about something like this, so that when it touches it, it kind of uh, trips it. Same circuit as a stop circuit. I'll have a think about it. I, I'm not planning on cutting any screw thread really close to the chuck at the moment, but we'll see. So just a few more things about uh, fittings for the tailstock. Tighten that a bit. So the thing comes with a, a dead center. This thread, by this sorry, this taper by the way is an MT2. I don't think MT is, is metric taper. I can't remember now. So you can get sleeves, right, which are MT2 to MT1. Okay, but obviously you can't go from MT2 to MT3. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Never seen that. Uh, so I have bought. A live or rolling center. So the difference between this and the dead center is that this actually rotates, uh, and that's an advantage. You know, if you've done machine and you, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've only ever used live centers. I don't like using dead centers. Uh, and the other thing I've bought is a uh, a, a drill chuck that fits in, uh, and this allows you to 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 drill up to 13 mil or. If you've got a, a, a 30 mil shank, then, then a little bit bigger. And that's really important because you need that to start your so board. In terms of tools, I've got this set here. These are, uh, these are really cheap uh, from eBay. These went in the set. This is just uh, a couple of center drills. So before you, you fit your live center, you've obviously got to drill, center drill the uh, end of the piece. So your live center can fit it, fit into it. So this is a tool set. So we've got two board and, two board and bars and uh, a part and off tool, and then a wide part and off tool. That's a parting tool. So the one thing that if you see that's got a nice angle on it. Some of these, so so that one's fine. But some of these you'll have to grind before you can use them. So if I pick this one up. How well you can see that, but this has actually got a relatively flat face. There's not a lot of uh, this material here, which presumably is a stellite. Uh, I'll know when I put on the grinder. Uh, so you need to just put a bit of an angle on that before you start using it for, for the first time. The parting tool's fine though. This is a screw cutting tool. Again, that's already got an angle, nice angle on it, so that's fine. You can, but there is an alternative to these where what you buy is a holder. These are 10 mil, by the way, which fit fit well into this, but you can, it looks like it'll take a bit bigger than that, which is big enough for the pieces I'll be working on. But you can buy a, a set which is a holder and you buy these these tips and they're, in, in reality, they're probably better uh, because they're always sharp, ready to go. You just throw the bits away and fit a new bit. You don't have to keep grinding them. But these will be fine, you know, uh, and certainly they're good enough for me. I, I don't think I'd, I'd, I'd go up to using the, 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 the tipped ones, but, but we'll see. The replaceable tipped ones, but we'll see. So we get on. So in terms of using a lathe, if you haven't used one before, right, <clears throat> so you, you've got your, your saddle, traverse. This thing's graduated. There's quite a lot of play in this. So you'd have to take over a pinch of salt. And this is your this is a cross slide. Again, this has got graduations on it, but I would take over a pinch of salt. I'd just keep measuring the piece. Uh, and this is the tool post. That's not moving at all. Oh, there it is. It's moving. It was at the end. So again, there's lots of play in this thing. I need to do something about that. Figure out what's wrong there. And that screw's just loose. Yeah, 
So it's just loose because it's all nice and new. Uh, but uh, I'll get all this tightened up and, and then we'll, we can uh, try and cut something. So in terms of the speed, right, so this is a variable speed. Uh, I've never, never worked with a variable speed. The, pro the only the problem I would have with a variable speed one is that is it load dependent? So basically as you load it up the speed drops. I don't know. Uh, it's possible. Uh, which would be disappointing, but uh, we'll see. If I just switch it back on again, so it needs to be closed. Just switch it on. Right, so the speed's read off here. You can see that. I don't know what maximum speed is. So the speed you have this rotating, switch it off. The speed you have this rotating, I was going to say, didn't I? the speed you have this rotating is dependent on the material and the size of the material, because your cutting speed is obviously on the the edge that you're cutting. Okay, so if you've got a wide diameter, the the radial speed is obviously much higher than if you've got a small diameter, and it's a radial speed that's important. Uh, so and also the material. So if you've got a soft material like brass, especially aluminium. Uh, your cutting speed can be quite high. If you've got a harder material uh, like mild steel or something, so your cutting speed is reduced. And then when you go to the really high, uh, the real tough materials like stainless and things like this, you've got to be really careful with your cutting speed because if you don't, what will happen is the temperature will build up and it'll, it'll start to weld itself to your tip and break the edge of your tip off and then you just ruin your, your surface finish then. Uh, there's no coolant on this machine, you notice. Uh, I've, We'll see how we get on. Uh, if necessary, you can always use uh, an oil can. Uh, this does have a drip tray underneath. Get me hand in shut. So here's a drip tray. So anything that falls down, you will be able to just clean it up, which is fine. Uh, first impressions. I think it's all right. You know, for the money I paid a little bit over seven hundred. Uh, I'm sure. Some people will be laughing at that and saying, oh, you could get that for half the price, but I couldn't. Uh, I think it's okay. We'll see it. We'll see how we cut. Uh, yeah, that's it.